Ducks, it's Simon here. I thought it was time to do a walkthrough video. So, um, as you will, let's light my incense. As you will recall, um, I've got a number of decks when I was in Glastonbury um, just a week ago. It was a week ago since um, the last day in Glastonbury. It feels like forever ago already. Um, I loved the two and a half weeks I've had off work, um, last day today. And I really wanted to uh, start the new week off working with this deck. And I'm really excited about this deck. It was on my wish list, my Amazon wish list. And I saw it in a shop. I don't know if you'll see it actually here on the price label. It was $23.99 and it's from a shop called Happy Glastonbury. Um, and I saw it in the shop and Sandra said automatically, that's on your wish list. Because Sandra and I, as well as a few other friends, Dan and Al, etc. Uh, we share each other's wish lists for birthdays, Christmases, that sort of thing. Um, so she knew it was on my wish list. I haven't seen a lot about this online. I think it was Gerald who... I was in a live and he started to show some of the cards and I thought, yes, I like this. Now, I do have another archetype deck, which is Kim Kranz's archetype deck, and I like it, I enjoy it, but it's not one that I um, reach for very often, whereas I think I will probably, you know, grab this one more. Um, the artwork really appeals in this deck to me. Uh, Nick Bantock is the creator of a, a series of books, Griffin and Sabine, um, which was a series, I believe, in the 90s, maybe early 2000s. Um, and this is, you know, a, an Oracle deck that he's produced based around uh, personal archetypes. So I suppose before we dive in and look at the cards, do a flip through, talk about them and all that sort of thing, just to explain what archetypes are, because I'm I'm conscious that, you know, in this community, we talk about um, a lot of things that are, we assume are, are a given that people know, and it's not always the case. Um, not everybody who watches our videos is familiar with tarot and the archetypes within the tarot. So basically, um, according to Jung, Carl Jung, an archetype is a, a mental image um, which comes through our earliest human ancestors and, you know, is is present in our collective um, unconscious or subconscious. So um, that information that is passed down, that, that's on a very sort of um, esoteric level. Um, but you, I suppose more what people might be more familiar with an archetype is like the um, protagonists and antagonists within within literature. Um, when I think of archetypes, I think of um, people or positions which have certain qualities, characteristics or traits. So if we think of um, mother as an archetype, the qualities, characteristics and traits might be, you know, someone who's very much a nurturer, a protector. And that's throughout all of the, the animal kingdom, isn't it? When you even watch wildlife programs and you see the mother protecting their young and they nurture them and take care of them. And I suppose that's where like mother goose um, comes from. And of course, in the in the tarot, in the major arcana, we see that represented very much with the the Empress card. Um, another archetype that springs to mind is hero. You know, the hero of the story um, usually starts out as somebody who's very um, ordinary, um, and then they begin an adventure, a journey. They might face certain trials and tribulations that they've got to overcome. And then they are victorious um, in the end. So, you know, George and the Dragon and, and, and things like that. Um, 
is it George and the Dragon or the Goliath story? Any of those kind of hero type stories where they um, ordinary people who become heroes through overcoming and facing trials. Other archetypes that spring to mind, you know, you've got mentor, um, villain, um, the wise one or sage, creator, lover, ruler, jester. And you recognise these again from, from the tarot. We've got our lovers, we've got our ruler, like the emperor. We've got the sage, which is like the hierophant. I love it when the hierophant is changed into something like wise one or sage, because that's more in keeping for me. Um, you know, the jester being the fool, um, but also the hero for me, you know, because the fool travels through the major arcana and reaches the world card, having gone through that hero's journey as well, often referred to as the fool's journey. So, so that's just a little bit about what archetypes are. So let's have a look at what we've got here. It's a lovely, it's by Llewellyn. Um, the only thing that springs to mind is it's very, you know, in keeping with the nice sturdy boxes. It is more compact than an oracle, uh, sorry, a tarot um, Llewellyn style deck. It's probably two thirds of the, the size and it's a little bit narrower, but it's lovely and compact. Really nice, sturdy magnetic closure box. This is um, one of the cards that's on the inside and it says includes a 42 card deck and 204 page full color guidebook. And I love the artwork. And you'll see here, there are some images because this is kind of a very collage type deck, but you'll see some images here that you will have seen in um, kind of some old vintage tarot decks. This sun here reminds me, well, it's taken from Atea, but it's also used in uh, Deck of the Bastard, which is one of my favorites. I'm just having a look actually to see if I can um, put my hand on that so I can um, show you. I can. There you go. So I have that as a cover on my um, plastic Deck of the Bastard because I love it. So um, yeah, so it's very collage-y. Um, but the, the artwork really appeals to me in this deck. So it says, build your inner life with a cast of colourful archetypes. And I love that, a cast. New York Times bestselling author and artist Nick Bantock presents a groundbreaking oracle deck that helps you create your personal mythology. Picture your inner life as a hero's quest and this deck as your band of faithful companions. The Archeo includes 40 archetype cards, a full colour guidebook detailing each one's skills, gifts and personalities, and two blank cards to make your own archetypal characters. Featuring mesmerising artworks that spark the imagination, this marvellous deck guides you in discovering your full potential as a person of many parts. I love it because we are, aren't we? We're, we're made up of so many different complexities. We are, you know, we are made up, as it says here, of many, many parts. And people, only we know ourselves, truly know ourselves. Even our twin souls and, and loved ones still, you know, nobody knows what's happening inside our own heads, the emotions we feel in our own hearts. We are made up of very... Uh, complex and detailed parts of our characters and personalities. So I love this deck and I'm hoping to, you know, really be able to connect with it and, um, you know, use these as a, as a band of friends, if you like, to, to help me on, on my uh, fool's journey. As it opens up, we've got this beautiful wolf um, on the inside. I mean, how stunning is this for, for artwork? We've got the book, um, 200 and, oh, full colour it said, yeah. Oh, 192 pages, but this is beautiful. It is glossy. Um, I know a lot of people don't like glossy um, pages because they can't write on it. I don't write on mine. I use little tabs. There's the moon from, also from Atea. Um, 
just gorgeous. So we'll have a look at the book. The cards, wow, these are large, larger than I was expecting. So you'll see here, we've got this ribbon that helps get the cards out. It is printed all the way through the inside. Does this, this removes, but actually I quite, I quite like that because it takes up most most of the base so the large compared to a tarot deck but you find that often with um oracle cards anyway but i kind of suspected or i thought with it being a llewellyn in this type of box that it might be tarot sized um the backs are beautiful but we'll have a look at the cards in more detail um after the flip through so i really like the presentation of the the, the box and everything there so we'll pop that to one side so let's have a look at more detail with the book so it says understanding and developing your archetypes and it is beautiful i love the detail look at this beautiful wolf which we saw on the inside it says the archeo uh Um, 2021 is the first printing, so it's this year, so it's very new. And I'm not one who likes a lot of uh, collage or lots of different ephemera kind of added to artwork. But this one is done, is done really well. So let's have a look. On the contents, we've got um, the characters, the 40 archetypes. So it goes from each one and they are in alphabetical order because looking at the cards, they aren't numbered. They do have titles on them, but I can't see numbers yet. So having them listed in alphabetical order will be really helpful. So everything from Alchemist, Anima and Animus, uh, Wakener, Falcon, so it lists them all. Oh, we've got uh, Midwife, Metamorph, oh, love it. Wanderer and Wolf at the end. Then we've got a section for layouts and spreads, growing and expanding your Archeo, um, expanding. Oh yes, because there's two extra cards, isn't there, where you can add two. I suddenly thought then, I wonder if there's going to be like, um, a series of these where you can keep expanding and adding to them over time. So I'm not going to read all of this. I'll probably just read the first paragraph or so. So just to give you a little idea of the introduction, it says, imagine your inner life as a quest, a hero's journey across a dramatic terrain. Would you want to travel that long road alone? Or would you rather have a company of good companions at your side? That's not as abstract a question as it might seem, because inside each of us, within, within our personal mythological domains, we have a fellowship of potential compatriots who, given the opportunity, would willingly accompany us. Over the years, numerous psychologists and philosophers have concluded that each of us is composed of numerous characters with different identities. These personas are often in a state of disagreement about choices and decisions, yet most of us carry on with our lives as if we were governed by a single authoritarian, I. This unwillingness to accept what is plainly under our noses has led us to often to an often uncomfortable state of affairs. Maybe that's come about because we are under the mistaken assumption that if we acknowledge our many-sided facets, we might develop split personalities or, worse, turn into raving schizophrenic. Uh, I'm not really, I don't really like that, but nothing could be further from the truth. Understanding and developing our archetypes not only acts as a means of internal unification, but also affords us the benefit of having numerous differing viewpoints and abilities to call upon when needed. So that just really gives that kind of um, setting that actually, you know, our personalities are made up of many and varied parts. Um, and, and we see that, don't we? We'll often have internal struggles or conflicts with making decisions about certain things, particularly if we're going on a quest or a journey or if we're making a decision whether, I don't know, something quite mundane like whether to buy a deck or not. You know, a part of us will be like, do I really need it? Another part will be, I really want it. 
one part might be well this could be used to assist me with this and then another part might be you know well i don't like the artwork or the creator or, or whatever so we have internal dialogues that you know sometimes we might get into disagreements with ourselves but using a deck like this as part of our spiritual journey then you know we've got these different personality types that can assist us so a card could connect us with one of our archetypes so we get for the cards we get a full page color uh, rendition of the card we get what the card is so here we have alchemist we get the attribute we get the persona which is really interesting so the attribute of the alchemist has the capacity to open our eyes and show us beyond the mundane to the great window that looks out on the unfolding universe and then the persona talks about those those qualities of that personality type and that's the same so angel we get so sometimes the image comes first sometimes the text comes first but we've got full color versions for each there's our fool the jester is even in that position in of stepping off on his journey and it says here the jester may act act like a fool but is far from being one yeah it's more of the hero for me artwork is beautiful so as we finish with wolf still a big a sizable chunk left of the book because that's because we've got layouts and spreads Growing and expanding your Archeo. Oh, and there's some questions to consider here. Some practical instructions for building your internal country. How big or small is your country? What's your country's geography and terrain like? What kind of climate does your country have? <laughs> so that's quite interesting. What beliefs are held by the people and possibly the animals? What might the sky look like? So this is quite an interesting activity to do. Building an internal country for your archaeo to inhabit. This is going to be a really interesting read and a fun activity to do as well. Archaeo tales. Wow. So here's each of the cards again. But this time we get a story. Because, you know, the archetypes are in stories. Um... The anima and animus tale turns out Eve didn't come from Adam's rib or, for that matter, any part of his anatomy. She and Adam were originally a single split being, an elegant experiment of pre-evolution that couldn't hold its form when subjected to various external pressures. So we, I love this that we get, you know, the story behind each of the archetypes here. As well as, you know, in the bigger book, getting the attribute and the persona. So, loving this book. Really loving this book. And then we get a little bit about Nick Bantock here at the end. And other works that is done. So, there we have it. Nice, chunky little book. So what I'll do now is we'll just do a flip through of the cards as I usually do. Let's take this band off. Um, so we'll do a flip through of the cards and then I'll come back and we'll have a little bit of a, um, a discussion or I'll share my thoughts. Um, and then we'll probably pull a card and see, see what we get in the book.
Okay, so there we have it. Let's put the light back in a better position. There we go. Um, yeah, so these are really nice. I, I forgot to mention the cardstock because it's Llewellyn, but these are nice springy um, cards. There is a lamination to them, but it's not a heavy set lamination. So they actually feel really, really decent. Um, and as mentioned, there's two. I never tend to use them because if I was to put my own um, archetypes on there, it wouldn't be the same artwork as this. I know I could put um, ephemera and collage -y type stuff on there, but it would jar for me. So I just tend to either take these out or have them as a, you know, protector card, top and top and bottom, like the old tarot decks had. These are the backs, which are really nice, lovely colours. They're not um, reversible because they have different symbols on them, but I wouldn't use this deck in that way anyway for me this is about um and i know there are spreads you can do but it's about pulling a card and working with that particular um archetype um so yeah and they're quite large so it might be difficult i've got really big hands so i can kind of shuffle these some people might prefer to do it that way i always get the cards going everywhere when i when i try and shuffle um that way but yeah so really lovely artwork and um, we get a lot of image with these being borderless i love this the anima and animus um i love that we've got a sun and a moon here we've got these opposites and even the bodies are, are split down to give uh you know to show the the kind of duality there love this one this is the arbiter but it's very justice isn't it you know with it being blind the scales and the sword um this is cute the little the little owl with a trumpet here awaken this it almost looks like a stone lion as part of the masonry we have our demon and these are archetypes that we're going to recognize particularly if we are you know tarot readers and we're used to working with archetypal energies the eccentric here really beautiful this one uh is fatalist but for me it's fortuna isn't it she's on that wheel she's balancing she's blindfolded we've got these arrows pointing up and down people turn in different parts of the wheel here and she's keeping balancing but there's a the wheel is over this kind of drop between these two terrains here so yeah it's beautifully represented i love this grace and here we have the green man and I, I think it's beautiful really beautiful i'm really finding a strong pull at the moment to the green man maybe it's since i brought the green man um statue from glastonbury from philippa bauer but yeah lots and i've got a green man t-shirt that i'm really loving at the moment but i did pick up a book on the green man when i was at avebury last year and i've still not read it so I think that's calling to me as well. I will have a read of that. So these are beautiful. Look at that hypocrite. Look at his face. <laughs> this is just, this is the illuminator. And we've got this um, lighthouse, you know, showing a way of safety through the storms. But then we get the sun from the Taya and it's just beautiful. How it's illuminating like the sun card does, you know. The innocent could also perhaps be a fool. He's got he's carrying his wares here. I love this long, long pointy nose and pointy ears. Our jester. Lion. It's just beautiful. Here we have our magician. Wow. Oh. That sounded like gunshots. <laughs> It's probably fireworks, but I'm not quite sure why fireworks would be going off at nine o'clock on a Sunday morning. But so and then we have the metamorph here and we can see, you know, we've got um, this kind of human turning into this kind of griffin here. We've got the planet and the earth sphere or realm. And then we've got the universe here with the moon 
beautiful. Kind of reminds me of the Seeker card in the um, Pagan Otherworlds tarot. Minus this, but this kind of design. Midwife. Oh, I really love it. Mobius. Moon Cat is quite interesting as an archetype because I don't know what a moon cat is. But, you know, that's what the book's for, to explore that. We have the Observer. And you see half of the face is animal-like here. It's almost like a cat with whiskers. And the Poet. This is interesting, the Reflector. And Reflector is my word of the year, um, which I selected back in the beginning of January. Um, so I was thrilled to see a reflector card, um, but I like the two different, this one's all kind of muscly and sinewy. The sage. Shadow diver. So the titles are, they're not... They're just kind of at the sides of the cards. They're not blocked off. It doesn't take away from any of the artwork at all. And as I said, they're not numbered, but the cards are easy to find because the book is set out alphabetically, which really helps. Star Climber. So it does take sometimes a moment to uh, find them. Here's our strategist playing chess. Survivor. That's quite a poignant image. I really like that. It's something that really appeals with that image. Our trickster. As I say, we have these little bits of ephemera as part of the artwork, like stamps and, and things like that. Warrior. And then we finish with our wolf card, which is beautiful. We get half of the wolf here, whereas in the box, we get the the full image. It's just beautiful. So there we have it. That is the Archeo. Uh, it's by Nick Bantoff and the publisher is Llewellyn. Um, and yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to um, working with this deck. It's gonna pull a card for us. Just so you get an idea of what the book tells you. I don't know what's going off out there. Apologise. It's normally on a Sunday morning. is ideal for filming videos because there's not a lot of noise. Particularly at this time. But something's going off. Yeah, they are a little bit difficult to shuffle. But if I try shuffling that way, they tend to end up all over the table. Especially if I do it fast. So... Luckily, I can get my hands around these. All right. So we have the sage. So let's have a look what the sage has got to uh, say to us. So the attribute of the sage. The sage, sage sits quietly by your side, reminding you to stay centred. His wisdom has come down through the ages, and his counsel is balanced and reliable. He has no material agenda, and unlike those priests who cloak themselves in worldly wealth, he requires no supplication, nor does he demand an adherence to a tablet of commandments. He sees no reason to regret or blame. I like that. The persona. Human kindness needs no stick or carrot. It simply requires us to understand that we are bound together in a single unity. He is Solomon and Siddhartha, imploring us to ground ourselves and listen to one's core steady pulse. He is the soul of intelligence and insight, teaching us to trust our deeper intuitive senses and make light, sorry, and make right choices based on grounding consciousness. He reminds us that it's okay to pause when faced with a choice. When you do not have enough information to act, that not knowing is a place of poise that shows maturity, not weakness. Wisdom is hard fought for 
and the sage did not come to his elevated awareness by accident. His path was long and lonely and his journey required great discipline, but in time it gifted him the powers of great compassion and empathy. He needs little and lives in a meditative, meditative simplicity. And then if you remember, there's these cards, these also the story at the back. Um, so the sage's tale, a boastful young monkey. So it describes the scene here. A boastful young monkey loudly declared that he could out argue anyone. An old man took him to a tall tree and began to climb, saying over his shoulder, follow me. The monkey reluctantly followed, asking, what do you want to debate? The old man climbed higher. The monkey shouted, that's far enough. Tell me, what shall we dispute? But the old sage kept going and eventually the monkey's nerve broke and he clambered back down. The sage continued until his head emerged above the leaves. He looked about at the beauty of the snow-topped mountains. What argument indeed, he murmured. I like this book. I love the little tales. It really brings out the, the personality and the uh, qualities and characteristics of the archetypes as well as getting your attributes and persona for your, your readings and working with the cards. So, oh, fantastic little book. Fantastic deck. I really love it. I know I keep saying I'm not going to get any more Oracle decks, but um, I don't have anything like this. So it was it was a, a, a no kind of um, a no brainer for me to to pick this up and, and get it. Thank you for watching. Um, no doubt I'll be back in the week. I've still got some other decks to open up and share with you. Um, let me know if you've got this deck, how you're getting on with it, or whether you're going to be getting it, or whether you didn't get on with it for whatever reason. I'd be interested to hear in your views. And until next time, as always, go in peace. Namaste and blessed be.